And it's manga time once again. I'm here to bring you my review of Bleach 641. Baby, hold your hand for when I am sleeping. And this is another continuation of this pretty long fight now. I think the longest fight in this arc is probably the longest continuous fight is probably still Grammy and Kenpachi. This is really coming close now, though. Um, and personally, this fight is way better, in my opinion. I really like this fight, actually. Um, the art is really, really good in this chapter. The action is dynamic, and it's really well choreographed, and Miyuri gets put in a lot of situations we don't get to see him in. Um, honestly, I'm just loving this fight, but I think it's almost over. So this week starts off with yet another callback to the fight against Uryu. Um, if you remember three chapters ago, I want to say, maybe two, Miyuri used his explodey extend the arm thing that he used against um, uh, Orohime in this whole society arc, and now he uses the Hoji Kuzai, which is also called the Capture Meat Medicine. And this is apparently, this is the same thing as what he used against Uryu when Uryu blasted his arm uh, in their fight. And it's that thing where he, he injects himself and the arm basically regrows. And it's 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 really cool to see these callbacks to the Soul Society arc. And because um, one thing I remember missing from M Miyuri's fight with Zayo was that he wasn't like he, he didn't use the same creepy tactics techniques he did back in the first fight. The only thing we're missing now is for him to pull out his ear and start spinning it around as like that little scythe thing. So that'd be kind of neat to see. But anyway, he injects himself with the uh, meat medicine and his arm returns. And it's a really gory image because you can see like his little fingers on different parts of the arm as it rebuilds and it's creepy as hell but apparently Nemu's main intention for showing up was to hand him the Hoji Kuzai because she noticed that he didn't take it with him like he usually does and so Miyuri's like you know oh so you noticed that I left before I managed to get a chance to get my my uh my drugs and Miyuri, and Nemu's like you know yeah before heading out you didn't rummage around in the uh, in the drug cabinet like you like you usually do and I, and I was concerned and Miyuri seems to think it's a bit unsettling that Nemu's watching him all the time I don't quite know why. Uh, I, I I feel like this is supposed to mean something, but I think it's more... Kubo's not necessarily painting them as equals, but Miyuri's treating her, definitely treating her differently. And the panel where they're both standing and facing Pernida it is really quite symbolic of them both being on equal ground at the moment. And I also like that Nemu has her own Hoji Kuzai and she's recreating her own arm, showing just how similar she actually is to Miyuri in that sense. So I like the fact that they're fighting side by side here now, this is, in my opinion, the first time you probably get that Captain Lieutenant dynamic from these two, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really liking that actually. Uh, I think it's working really well. So they basically get straight into the action again. Miuri leaps off the uh, off the side of the building and activates his uh, Hirenkyaku boots and gets down to business. Um, interestingly, his Hirenkyaku activates like a rocket, and he goes blast, literally blasting towards Fernando, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, he's literally like. Firing himself towards Pernida. And the action is just so good. It's so good. It's drawn so well. Pernida is able to summon like literally five bows. One on each of the tips of its fingers and thumb. And it just starts firing these arrows at Miuri. And Miuri is like being a... Weaving through them because he's like a jet now. As he's flying however he suddenly notices behind him. Pernida's other two arms literally rising up. And it's like creepy as fuck. And I think it's really well drawn. And honestly this whole fight has been really good so far. Um... But though they also have bows on their fingers and thumbs, so they literally have. Perrin now has fifteen bows, and they start firing at Miri. And there's just another fantastic picture of um, the current battleground. The three arms all raised up, like in a in a triangle, and they're literally just firing at Miri, who's in the centre. Who they don't have their eyes on, however, is Nemu. And Nemu leaps off the building, and Miri's got a little thing in her ear, and he says, "You know, can you hear me? This is our plan of attack." And I like this. The action in this chapter is really good. There's actually a plan of attack. They're actually using um, strategy, and I love that. Literally, Miuri is now weaving in about these arrows, and he says that he's going to continue, continue to move the way he is. As he does so, he's sprinkling the area with a uh, concentrated narcotic anaesthetic. However, it's not the same as a regular anaesthetic. He doesn't know if it's going to affect Pernoda, but he realises that the nerves are attached to the arrow, so at the moment, Pernoda's nerves are kind of going everywhere. And the arrows will be rendered helpless when this anaesthetic touches them. So Miuri's mission to Nemu is that when, when she reaches the incapacitated arrows, Miuri wants her to inject a nerve freezing agent that Miuri has developed straight into the arrow. So the plan is, in layman's terms, Miuri is attracting these arrows off of Pernida, and when he sprinkles them with his anaesthetic, they stay on the ground. Nemu is then, and, and, the, and the nerves are unable to move. 
Nemu's then able to get on top of the nerves and stab the arrows with this nerve freezing agent, therefore freezing the arrow and the nerve and then whatever it's attached to, i.e. Pernada. So basically, Miyuri starts going off on one again. He starts getting very, very happy with, with his plan. And he's like, you know, once under the power of this drug, open eyelids won't be able to close. A contracted heart won't, it won't ever expand. And even an open mouth will never shut again. Um, and I think Nemu picks up on the fact that Miyuri's not being his similar self and that she's like, you know, you're being too loud, Miyuri. Um... And I definitely, the death flags are still here for Miuri, and it's very, the end of this chapter is crazy. Um, but I don't know if he's going to die anymore. Nemu possibly might. I, th I think one of them definitely is going to. Um, but who? I don't know. Um, so Miuri's like, you know, I haven't been able to confirm what Punnard's actually made of, but I know that there is blood inside of it, and I'm going to freeze it, the flow of its own blood, and kill it that way. So Nemu lands on the ground, and she actually, she's like a pretty, kind of like a badass ninja in the way she moves. Um... And she lunges for this arrow and she plunges the uh, the nerve freezing agent into it. So she succeeds in her mission and the arrow begins to freeze. And I, like I said before, I love this tag team we're getting between the captain and lieutenant. You don't see that enough. Although we have seen more of it in this arc than we generally do. So Pernod's main hand, the one wearing the, the clothes, suddenly gets frozen. And it, start, it freezes immediately. And then the other hand also freezes. And so both two of Perlander's hands are completely frozen. The third hand notices this, and it's cool because you see its eye looking at the looking at the frozen hands. And then it realises its own thumb is also getting frozen. To which Miuri says, checkmate Perlander, because he thinks he's won. Of course, it's not that simple. Um, we know that Perlander has this very strange ability to break it off its own body parts, its will. So it crushes its own thumb and removes its thumb before it's able to be uh, frozen completely. And I really liked this bit, because Miri's like, oh, crap. And Pernanza says, you know, you think that's enough to kill me, Korotsuchi, or in the manga stream when he says you're going to have to do better than that. And I love that, and I love the way it's drawn as well, because Pernanza's a hand. He's not got a face, but Kubo still managed to give it the sinister shading that a face would usually have when it's making a threat like this, and I think it's quite funny. It's, it, it is funny, but I like it as well. It's cool. But yeah, it's cool that Pernanza's now got to the stage where it's talking down to Miri, like, you know, and it even knows his name. And Miuri's like, you know, what's with that manner of speech? It's almost as if Soraki were talking to me. Obviously, you know, he's talking about the fact that Pernanda's voice is, seems to be changing, um, like last week. There's something I want to bring up about this, though, quickly. And before I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. Miuri realises what's going on. He realises that Pernida, whenever it attaches something to its nerves, it absorbs information about them and grows stronger, which is fucking crazy like don't think that power is ridiculous it's that's Im immensely broken so because Pernida attached itself to Kenpachi it was able to gain its strength again Kenpachi's speed and everything like that and um and now it's talking like Kenpachi but that doesn't make there's one thing that doesn't make much sense um the last chapter when Miyuri realized the speech pattern was different it wasn't sounding like Kenpachi. It was just really eloquent. It was saying something like, I've had it with your incessant bad-mouthing of the Quincy. That is not something Kenpachi would ever say. Kenpachi would be like, you know, shut your mouth about the Quincy or something like that. Um, and a lot of people theorised that was the Soul King's actual voice coming through last chapter. So I don't really know what that's all about. Um, but anyway, uh, but also, one other thing. If Pernida is able to use the powers of those that it's taken... Surely it can use the abilities of Yoroichi, or at least, you know, use some aspect of Yoroichi's powers, Senjimaru's powers, the people from the Royal Guard, you know, Divine Army. Um, I've heard some arguments about this, that Pernida couldn't use, couldn't, can't use those guys' abilities because it was sealed at the time, because the, of the of the chains on its fingers. But that doesn't work, because Pernida was sealed when she attacked Kenpachi. So that doesn't make any sense. The only one I can think of is that Pernida, before the Alshvalen, Pernida was as powerful as it is now, because Lil Barrow basically confirmed as much. So, either she can't, she couldn't use like the Senjumaru ones because it was pre alshvalan but even still she should be able to use Yoroichi's power. So, maybe we'll see that later, I don't know, I, I'm not sure we will. But either way, it's very frightening that Pernod is actually able to, able to evolve in this way. And literally, Pernod is a really dangerous enemy. I'm really glad as well, because we were all quite hyped for Sturmer to see. We Sturmer to fans were quite hyped for C. And it's nice to see Pernod actually performing. And like, I don't think Miuri's going to win this. I really, I really don't. But um, 
Miri notices that Perna's hand is getting ever closer to Nemu, and he realizes that you know if if Perna is now at Zaraki's level or even higher, Nemu won't be able to get away. And Miri's like, you know, fall back this instant, Nemu. And as he screams that, the real, like, the main Perna the hand is behind him, in in the best panel in my. This is the best panel in my opinion because it's just fucking awesome. Um, and it's it's frozen skin peels away. And it looks amazing, and it's because of Miuri's Bankai, the Matai Fukuin Shotai, because that had the ability to peel stuff away. Um, which is awesome, because we know that Perneda used its nerves on that creature, because it used its nerves on and then it peeled away, and Perneda was like, shit. But now, Perneda has the ability to shed its own skin, like, if it wanted to do that. It's just crazy, Perneda's crazy. Its ability is ridiculous. Um, oh, another cool thing to note is that Pernanda also has the Haggle Rune Cross actually tattooed on its wrist, which is quite cool. So, uh, the last part of this chapter is kind of diff it's ambiguous, purposefully so. The, the Pernanda's real, the main arm, frees itself from its frozen state, and all you see is Miuri look up at it as something comes crashing down. Now, whether the, whether the hand is like grabbed Miuri, or it's crushed Miuri, or it hasn't actually hit Miuri yet, it's impossible to say. Because on the next page, we move over to Nemu, and the look on her face is not good. Whether Miuri is already fucked, I, I, it's hard to say, but she is not looking happy. Um, like, she is really not looking happy. Um, her eye is literally like going crazy at this point, and she says, like, Miuri summer, and then she leaps towards him. All you see is her foot moving, and then she she thinks Mayuri summer and that's the end. So one of these two or both is going to die. Um, I'm still I'm still pretty sure of that. Which one? I have absolutely no idea. Will Mayuri save sacrifice himself to save Nemu? Will Nemu sacrifice herself to save Mayuri? Will they both die? Will neither of them die? I hope one of them dies. Got to be honest. I, I feel like the death flags have been flown way too long now for all for them both to survive. Um, really seems like it. It's building to Miuri dying here. Uh, Nemu's clearly going to do something last minute to try and save him, but next week's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, this fight continues to be really good, actually. Um, I really like this chapter. The artwork was absolutely on point. The action was dynamic, and it was choreographed really well. The feels are still there between Nemu and Miuri, and it looks like we might be going into another flashback next week, which is awesome, because it ended up with a black panel. Um, so again, I think we'll get Nemu's first ever appearance when she was created, etc, etc. We'll probably see all that, and then one of them will die. Um, in fact, I reckon, this is my prediction of how the chapter goes. It starts with Nemu's flashback. We get a couple of pages, maybe more, maybe a half a chapter, of how Nemu was created in the first time she met Muri, etc, etc. And then when the, when the flashback disappears, Nemu will be dead slash defeated. Like, she'll be in Pernada's hand or something, and Miuri will be right there, and he'll be like, yeah, I told you not to act on your own, why did you try and save me? And she's like, Miuri, someone, and then she says something like, because I, because you're my father, or or because I care about you, or something like that, and then Pernada will kill her. That's what I think might happen, I could see that happening, definitely. As for Miuri, he, I, he just doesn't stand a chance. There's no way he can beat Pernada, because he, has, he hasn't brought half his stuff, apparently, and he's used his Bankai, He's used a bunch of gadgets, and he can't win. Pernanda has thrown them all away, and continues to evolve. It continues to advance, and that's what he, Miri said about the left arm. So, yeah, Miri's in trouble. I'm actually going to drop a four on this week's chapter, guys. I really liked it, um, and I, 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 like I said, the ending was super intense. I was reading it like, whoa, shit, and then it ended, and I was like, oh, great. So that was a bit annoying. Uh, it did kind of feel like it just ended, but at the same time, you know, I, I thought it was, I thought it was really enjoyable. Let me know, guys, in the comments below, did you like this chapter as much as I did? Are you liking this fight, or do you kind of wish it was just over now and we moved on to one of the others? Um, admittedly, I would like to see one of the others, but I'm enjoying this fight all the same. Um, and let me know, guys, do you think anyone's going to die? And if they are going to die, who's going to die? So, yeah, let me know. As always, please subscribe. I'd super appreciate it. And give the video a thumbs up. That'd be great. But until next time, guys, see you later. Oh, didn't turn off.